Hello, everybody. This is Mike Regan, Midwest Account Manager for NEC, representing the NEC SL11 telephone system. And I'd like to welcome you to my continuing series of pre-recorded WebEx seminars covering different aspects of the SL1100. And today's presentation, I like to call, What About Tip Trucks? And what we're going to cover over the next few minutes is we're going to try to help you understand the position and purpose of SIP trunks in the market and how the SIP trunks would integrate with the NEC SL1100 telephone system. What we're going to cover is we're going to look at why SIP trunks. We'll look exactly at what are SIP trunks. We'll talk about the benefit of SIP trunks. We'll talk how to integrate SIP trunks in with the SL1100 system. And then we'll make some clarifications to some misconceptions surrounding SIP trunks. Let's start with taking a look at why SIP trunks. And usually the why happens because that's what the last guy quoted me. Right? That's how end users find out about SIP trunks. And they're not even sure they've actually found out about SIP trunks. It's usually because the last guy in there quoting them the phone system has quoted them a hosted solution, uh, one of the hosted voice over IP solutions. And those are usually associated with SIP trunks. The deployment involves SIP trunks. You can almost think of this in terms of them being the new Centrex, right? Go back 30, 40 years, the telephone company was selling Centrex lines, which was a way to provide PBX switching without actually having customer premise equipment. Hosted is the same thing, except now it's done, instead of doing the analog line, it's done with SIP trunks, right? The cool thing about this is that you can integrate SIP trunks in with the NEC SL1100 phone system, and they become a tremendous substitute for PRI circuit, and that they provide DIDs, you know, direct inward dial numbers. They can show some savings on some long distance, and you can port numbers to actually a different location or from a different location onto the system through the use of uh, 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 SIP trunks. Another way they're substitute, or, or, or let's go back and take a look at the DIP premise. Um, we're seeing a lot more small businesses wanting to take advantage of the direct inward dial feature. And prior to SIP trunks, the way to do that was with a PRI circuit, which is all well and good for the larger user, but if the small business has only four or six lines on it, they don't need the 23 channels that a PRI circuit provides. SIP trunks, they can buy four or six SIP trunks, depending on what their, their trunking needs are, get their DIDs, and probably show a savings over buying the full-blown PRI circuit. So there are some definite advantages to doing SIP trunks with the SL1100. What is SIP trunking? SIP trunking is nothing more than a different way of bringing dial tone into the facility. However, instead of analog signal, like a POTS line, or digital signal, like PRI circuit, it's using IP technology or voice over IP to bring the system into the, to the DMUT, or bring the, the, the signal into the DMUT. SIP can replace a traditional copper line, allowing business to communicate with either fixed or wireless subscribers. It, SIP trunks can give them a tremendous amount of flexibility, give the users a tremendous amount of flexibility with their line. Okay. The benefit of SIP trunks for a dealer is this concept of reoccurring monthly revenue. Um, much like the phone companies did 30, 40 years ago with Centrex lines, SIP service providers are paying finders fees, monthly payments to residuals or SIPs or commissions, however you want to refer to it. They're paying those out to 
dealers such as yourself for reselling their service. And so it can, it can, it can be another revenue stream for you guys. I, I would recommend to shop around and check with the provider to see who offers the best deal. Okay? And you can, just as a little sidebar, you can utilize tip trunking and leasing to help compete with, with hosted solutions out there. Benefits of SIP. SIP stands for Session Initiation Protocol. It's, it's a standard set by the IETF. However, it's a standard that hasn't really been standardized. Well, what I mean by that is everybody does SIP a little bit different. What that means for us as a manufacturer is that we have to go through some interoperability testing to not only ensure that um, our, our service provider SIP trunk will work with our system, but more importantly, so that we can set parameters in our programming to make it easier for you all when deploying SIP trunks on the SL100. Here's a list of all of the SIP service providers that we've done interoperability testing on. Right? And again, it's not so matter how much of, of us being concerned about whether or not somebody's SIP service is compatible with the SL1100. Most of them, if not all of them, are, even if they're not on this list. The challenge, though, becomes if, if you're not using somebody who's an interop testing with, is then it becomes the programming gets deeper and can get a little more complex. So with these uh, 21 different service providers that we've done interoperability testing, we've made the necessary adjustments in program so that if you deploy a system that has and you're using broad box. Uh, SIP trunks and programming, you click on Broadbox, and then all of the necessary programming parameters get you know, get populated in the appropriate field. So I, it would be advisable if you're looking at utilizing SIP trunks with the SL1100 to look at one of these companies that we've done interoperability testing. The benefits of the SIP or SIP service or the SIP protocol, NEC allows for the ability to use both copper and SIP trunks. We are a converged switch, right? So we can run copper, we can run analog trunks, we can run SIP trunks, we can run a PRI circuit on our system, and we can run all three different types simultaneously on the system. So it's not out of the realm of possibility for somebody to have a couple of pot lines on a system with six SIP trunks. In fact, it's kind of recommended for redundancy. All right. By the same token, NEC allows for the ability to use digital and SIP extensions on the system. All right. One of the big misconceptions about utilizing SIP trunks on our system is then people think they need to run all voice over IP extensions on the system, and that's not the case. You can certainly run a system, an SL1100, with SIP trunks coming in and have all of the phones on the system be digital phones. Digital phones will have access to SIP trunks. By the same token, it's not out of the realm of possibility to run an SL1100 system utilizing all SIP extensions or voice over IP extensions and having POC lines coming into the system. Voice over IP extensions will have access to the POC lines. That's the beauty of using a converged switch is that no matter what type of signal you have coming in, POC, PRI, or SIP trunks, all the extensions on the system will be able to access those lines, whether they're analog stations, digital stations, or voice over IP stations. And the other cool part about all this, being a convert switch, we can do so maintaining all the features and functionality of a telephone system. Doesn't sound, you know, that 
may not seem like a big deal, but if you look at 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 full on voice over IP solution, or if you really want to have fun, ask somebody who's built a hosted solution how do you do paging, and they they can do it, but it costs more and there's additional add-ons you have to have on the system. If we're running uh, with our system, even if they're running all voice over IP, they can still do paging. And as I mentioned, it allows both digital and IP phone access to trunking and vice versa. Right. IP phones and digital phones will have access to POC phone. Because of the interoperability testing, we've made it easier to program the tip trunks. We've made it relatively easy to adjust the codex for bandwidth setting. And utilizing SIP makes it easier for Mac work. If you're doing voice over IP stations, you can unplug your station from one location and plug it into another, and all your program pops up. Okay. There's three ways to deliver SIP service to the POP or to the DMAR. And I just want you to be aware of the three different ways. Um, there, the first way is an MPLS network, which is you usually see more so on the enterprise solution um, because it can be rather expensive. It's also the most secure way. Uh, to deliver SIP to the to the DMR, to the POP. Um, but we're starting to see MPLS filter their way down into the small to mid-sized business application. So just be aware of it. The other way is where your SIP service provider and your internet service provider are the same people, same company. The most popular way that we see, though, in the marketplace is your SIP service provider and your internet service provider are two different companies. So you just have to make sure that handshake goes on. And more often, you know, in most cases, it does. But this is the, the this third uh, or delivery, a method of delivery is, is the most popular one, where the SIP service provider and the internet service provider are two different companies. Okay? How much bandwidth is required? Depends on the customer's need. For one SIP session, using the G.711 codec, this is roughly 80 kilobits per second of bandwidth. That's our default setting. So one needs to calculate voice and data requirements based on the number of users and door locations. Okay. The big thing to remember in all of this is voice over IP and the SIP service it's only going to be good as good as the network that it's running on. So the network infrastructure at the user's location becomes very important when doing voice over IP. Okay. So just be aware of that. And then uh, uh, some instances you may require like quality of service routers to prioritize voice packets. Integrating SIP trunks onto the SL1100 is actually pretty easy. All right? Requires the use of a voice over IP daughter board. Optional card does not occupy an expansion slot. It mounts directly onto the CPU. Has a low cost of $249 to you dealers. All right? Comes with 16 ports on it. The first Four ports of those 16 ports can be used for SIP trunks. Once you go beyond the first four ports, or go beyond four SIP trunks, we sell a SIP trunk license that's a two-channel increment, and there's the part number for it. Okay. So if you have somebody that's looking for eight SIP trunks on a system, you would have to install your voice over IP daughter board and then two of these SIP trunk licenses to get them up to eight SIP trunks. And then at that point, you would have eight ports left to run voice over IP extensions, voice over IP extensions and move to that system. 
then we do sell a 16-port voice over IP expansion license. Takes it up to 32, a total of 32 ports or resources or licenses. And then you can add the appropriate amount of the drug license. All right, so if you run into the unusual situation of somebody needing 24 SIP trunks, then it would be a matter of, of adding your voice over IP daughter board, expanding it with the 16 port voice over IP license, and then adding 10 of these two channel SIP trunk licenses. And that'll get you up to a total of 24 SIP trunks on the system. So some clarifications about SIP and SIP trunks. The first one, the big misconception, we've already started talking about this, is SIP trunks equals a full-on voice over IP system. In other words, if you're using SIP trunks, you need to use voice over IP phones. That's true in the hosted arena, unless they use analog terminal adapters. But for our application, with the SL1100 and customer premise equipment, the CPU does the switching. So yes, while the SL1100 does require a voice over IP daughter board and the appropriate amount of SIP trunk licenses, digital phones can access SIP trunks with no problem on the system. And vice versa, Voice over IP phones can analog can access analog trunks on the system. That's what the, the flexibility of a converged switch like the SL1100, a switch that's capable of running both analog trunks and voice over IP trunks, and is capable of running digital phone and SIP phone. Right, gives you tremendous flexibility in how you deploy the system as well as, don't forget, maintaining all of the features and functionality of the phone system. All right. Another big misconception is SIP trunks automatically equals long distance. No, that, that, that's not the case. SIP trunks offer various degrees of, of long distance packages, and you can see a tremendous amount of savings on long distance calls with the use of SIP trunks, but free long distance, not necessarily true. And then PRI emulation, this is true, right? You can do DIDs with SIP trunks. You can port to and from a different location, port numbers to and from a different location through the use of SIP trunks. So yes, it's a great way to get similar features, or SIP trunks are a great way to get similar features um, of a PRI circuit without having to buy a full-blown 23-channel PRI circuit. Okay. When all else fails, don't forget our support resource at www.necmtac.com. If you have not registered there, please go and register. Get yourself a tech ID number and a password because all of the technical documentation is there, all of the user guides or programming guides for each one of the SIP trunk, trunk service providers that we sell are there. So this is a very useful website for the dealer as far as giving technical information regarding the SL-100. Okay, wrapping up. SIP trunks are kind of the new Centrex line and that they offer some reoccurring monthly revenue to those dealers reselling the service, right? SIP trunks do not require voice over IP phone, at least not with customer premise equipment like the NEC SL1100 system, okay? SIP trunk integration on the SL1100 is easy. There's minimal components, and we've done interoperability testing to help set those programming parameters for each different SIP service provider. And don't get trapped by the misconceptions. There is our supply manager account map 
or our supply account manager map. The account managers that cover different areas, I'm mainly in the Midwest, and all of our contact information. If you have any further questions regarding this presentation or any of the presentations, please don't hesitate to contact me. Best way to reach me is via email, michael.regan at necam.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for your time. I hope this is helpful for you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me or one of the other account managers out in the field. Thank you. Have a great day.